Hi everyone, how are you going? I hope you're having a good day. I really do. Um, I'm going to share this because bullies and trolls and haters, they really do disrupt people. I have one that's been trying to make me feel bad for a long time and they think they've made me cry when they haven't. It's actually quite funny. You picked on their own person. All right. Understanding the psychology of hate. Haters come in all shapes and sizes and personality types, but they all have something in common. Love your haters. They're your biggest fans. Hate is almost impossible to avoid. And the more you excel in your life, the more you will get it. So in some sense, hate is a pretty reliable indicator of success. But to have a better understanding of what this means, we need to take a closer look at the phenomenon. So you, let's get into this. The most common causes of hatred. People start to hate when they're unable to cope with a lower sense of self-worth, a lack of self-esteem and inferiority complex, envy of someone else's success, lack of self-compassion, abuse of trauma, PTSD, humilia humiliation or mistreatment by another person, or fear of the other. No one can make you feel inferior without your permission. Eleanor Roosevelt. The biggest, biggest mistakes to avoid when dealing with hate is trying to figure out the mind of the hater, you start doubting yourself nearly every way. Don't do it. Starting to question the righteousness of your decisions and actions. This is what they want. Don't do it. They start, you start looking at your faults with yourself. Start give, thinking that you deserve hate and which you don't. It's them projecting their own emotions onto you. It forces you to give up your dreams, alter your decisions, goals, opinions and approach with others. Don't do it. Don't change yourself because of these people. Hatred or emotional projectile vomiter. Have you ever talked to someone so convinced that they know better than you and that you know yourself that it made you feel extremely uncomfortable? I mean, this kind of conversation when you speak openly about your thoughts and emotions making yourself clear and that person comes up with something about you which is completely ridiculous and does not fit in with who you are at all. And what's worse, the more you try to correct them, the harder they try to prove you're wrong. What a pain in the neck. This sort of situation occurs a lot and it's called psychological projection. It's a defense mechanism we all employ to defend ourselves against undesirable qualities, emotions and thought by denying the existence in ourselves while accusing others to have them. We even use this me mechanism to reduce anxiety, embarrassment and discomfort without even realizing. However, the problem comes when psychological projection employed by one person harms another person. Examples of this kind we can find easily in both online and offline worlds. It becomes particularly clear when you read savage hate comments full of obnoxious and ridiculous accusations that they clearly have no basis in the facts. People project their own issues and difficult emotions they cannot deal with to others all of the time. And trust me, once you learn how this psychological projection works, you will spot emotional projectile vomiter a mile away. But most importantly, you'll never fall into their trap again. Because the only way to win with the emotional projectile vomiter, aka hater, aka hater, is not to play. There is other great ways to deal with a hater, bullies, or any type of a toxic person you will soon or later come across in your life. And they are here. How to deal with bullies, haters, and trolls. The best one I found is ignore them and walk away and block them. Grey rock is a great method to deal with a hater when you have to interact with them. Sometimes the luxury of not paying attention or simply ignoring an ever person isn't, isn't the luxury we have. I'm thinking here of dealing with a boss that is not your biggest advocate, your co-worker who doesn't acknowledge your presence for no apparent reason. Of course, escaping from a hostile workplace or a neighbourhood would be preferred, yet in most cases impossible option. What you can do to improve your situation? Well, you can use the grey rock method to deal with the negative difficulty and extremely toxic people. The Grey Method is essentially about coming across as a boring, uninterested, indifferent and monotonous person. It is intended to make the hater lose attraction to you. Toxic people love creating drama because they feed on the negative energy. They feed on your emotional reaction. That's what, why they get, try to get you into twisting, exhaustive mental spin of argument. Haters are all about winning and feeding their sick ego. They will do anything they can to prove they're right. Even their arguments against you are completely ridiculous. They want to see you in a losing position because that makes them feel they're in power. They want to see you being hurt because it gives them a sense of control. If you don't want to give your power away, what you should never do, you have to act sensibly. When dealing with a hater, 
you want to present yourself as someone cool, indifferent, and almost bored. You cannot give them an emotional reaction, even if you push your buttons like nobody's business. You want to cultivate neutrality and come across as calm, confident, and a strong person. If you show a hater that you don't dwell into drama, they will lose interest in you. If you cannot pr provoke, if they cannot provoke you into getting angry, make you emotionally react and act impulsively, they will be not able to feed on the negative energy. So in other words, they will lose. Being able to use the grey rock method is a great skill in general because sooner or later you'll have to deal with a negative, difficult or extremely toxic person. And when it happens, don't feel a hater with your emotional reaction. Starve them with your indifference. How beautiful it is to stay silent when someone expects you to be enraged. Respond instead of reacting. Haters try to provoke you, draw you to, into their game. They're doing this because they hate themselves and instead of working on themselves and change their status quo, they choose to destroy the lives of others. Why? Probably because it's much easier for them. They are targeting you because they're jealous of you. They have nothing. You have something they wish for and it's making them extremely uncomfortable. They are jealous of you because they are living your life. Having a good time, feeling good about yourself and they are not. Anybody in their right mind would start working on themselves, but not haters. Haters are going to hate. It's a sick game they play. You cannot let these people provoke you, draw you into their sick game, because you will lose, just like Jared Bernard Shaw said. I learned long ago never to wrestle with a pig. You get dirty, and besides, the pig likes it. Don't play their sick games. Don't let them provoke you. Don't give them any emotional reactions because exactly what they want from you. Don't feed into the drama. Instead, take a deep breath before you do anything and wait till your mind the mud settles and the water is clear and then decide your best course of action based on reasoning choose to respond instead of letting your emotions influence you to do or say something you may regret later don't take hate personally do you get judgmental or dirty looks from people when you go out i mean this is kind of weird evil look that almost makes you freeze someone is staring at you trying to intimidate you a complete stranger you've never met before in your life for some reason tries to communicate their thoughts and feelings with eyes. They just stare at you, trying to make you feel uncomfortable. And at that moment, they're succeeding because you can't ignore them. Or so you think. Intrusive thoughts are popping into your head to create a loop in your brain that feels it difficult to escape. The situation is becoming an impossible one. And you start to ask yourself, what's happening? What's wrong with me? What have I done? What's wrong? Your heart starts to beat faster, your breathing becomes erratic and cold sweat starts running down your neck. You feel like you're about to have a panic attack and it's all because of the evil look of a complete stranger. Of course, an evil look is just an example. Same goes for getting hate comment or being disrespected and not only by a stranger. What if you could just ignore it? Ignore a random person, completely stranger, then obviously have some serious issues with themselves but instead of addressing them they are projecting them onto others i know it's easier said than done but here's the thing if you let other people's negative energy affect you their problems become your problems how crazy is that don't take their criticism evil look or hate comments personally don't let negative comments energy affect your state of being don't give power to people over your life stop playing their sick games you create your reality and not someone else's reclaim your power to you we all have limits and boundaries we all have limits and boundaries to communicate that line. Set personal boundaries. Personal boundaries are our guides for what we will and won't accept in our interpersonal, interpersonal relationships and interactions. They are not only to protect our individuality, personal values and beliefs also separate our physical and mental space from others. Without them, we run the risk of confusing our feelings, beliefs, needs and responsibilities with others, which is the real threat to our integrity. So as you can see, setting personal boundaries is not an option but a necessity. You need to establish this clear cut view of what kind of treatment and behaviour you will accept and not accept. You need to show people how to treat you and what you expect from you to be able to build and maintain a healthy interpersonal relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. And we're not talking here only about setting personal boundaries in the real but also online world the internet has long ceased to be a way just to spend free time the internet has changed our everyday life and we cannot ignore it anymore it has become not only a global means of communication but also a great way to earn money meet new people or get an education in other words we are already living in a virtual reality this that is why we must set personal boundaries also above all in our virtual dimensions. If you are still not convinced, think about receiving hate comments on your social media accounts. If you have never got a negative or aggressive or offensive comment on your social media profiles, it's just a matter of time. Unfortunately, and when that happens, 
you will want to or have to react somehow. We talked earlier about grey rock method, but when hate comment come, becomes hate speech, ignoring it is not an option. So what are the options? Ignore, block and report. And that's what I do with a lot of people. See all these hidden users here? All these people subscribe to my channel and I blocked them all. Every single one of them. Yeah, 286 more. Every single one of them got blocked. Just block them. Ignore them. I am convinced that life is 10% of what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are all in charge of our attitudes. Charles L. Swindoll. Focus on your reality. We're creating meaning, yet nothing has meaning alone. We create meaning and we bring it to life. Things are just ordinary items and people are just random social beings before we give them a specific meaning. We create stories and narratives to make sense of the world. We create words to describe our experience. We create happiness and suffering. We create hope and doubt. We create self-love and self-hatred. We create success and failure. We create ourselves. We create our own reality. This means that we have the power to control entirely our, our internal world. Isn't that great? What happens in the external world is beyond our control, but still... We can control how to respond to things that we cannot control. If you don't want your surroundings to affect the way you think and feel, you need to look internally. Don't give your power away by letting another person affect you negatively, your well-being and state of mind. Don't let other people create your reality. Don't give your power away. Don't let negative energy to don't let in, don't let negative energy to destroy your inner peace. Focus on what you can control and create positive reality for yourself. Your problems are with me and not my problems. Those are your problems. Use it to your advantage. The path towards success, set it to your advantage. One, establish strong personal boundaries and work on your self-esteem. Two, practice self-reflection to have a better understanding of your feelings, emotions and thoughts. Three, be resilient and continue to work towards your, work towards your goals. Four, don't let others demote you or shoot you down in your dreams. Five, take ownership of your feelings and emotions. Six, don't let other people's negative energy affect you. Seven, look internally, rather externally, control your reality and accept that you cannot control the external world. Eight, don't dwell in the drama. Nine, don't let other people's problems become your problems. And ten, remember that you are the creator of your own reality. Hate means that you're on the right path to success. Post about, best post about one being. So there's a post here. I'll leave these links in the descriptions for you all, but please, this is the best thing. Ignore, report, block. Don't let them get to you. Raise your vibrations. Much love. Thanks for watching. Bye.